Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about outlines and the methods that we're going to use for the outlines are using the grid system, uh, tracing and freehand. Once I have all these outlines done, I'm going to compare them to the reference photo so you can see how many differences there are on the outlines compared to the reference photo. And then I'm going to color in all the eyes and then we can see how these outlines affect the final result. For um, supporters on Patreon, there's a whole hour and a half tutorial on this where you can see how I do every outline and I talk my way through all of it. You also see how I color in all the eyes and um, yeah, a lot of information over there for supporters on Patreon. So I will be discussing everything using Sketchbook Pro. I have everything ready on my screen here and I am just going to take you through it all. Okay. Okay, so here I have my outlines drawn in graphite. I've drawn it really bold so that you guys can see what it looks like. So this one I drew using the grid method. I just divided everything into six squares. And this one I traced. All I did was I colored in the back of the reference photo with graphite and then I put it on top of this block and I traced the outline onto my paper. And then this one I just did freehand. You can see a couple of dots or marks on my reference photo. Those are just reference points I used so that I could sort of measure with a little ruler or measure with my fingers so that I knew where I could start different areas and put them down on here accordingly so that I could get it as accurate as possible. So after I did these outlines, I did take a note of all the time that it took to do it. So the grid method took me 26 minutes to be able to draw this outline. The tracing method only took me three and a half minutes. And the freehand took the longest. That took me 28 minutes to just draw these outlines. Okay, so what I've done here is I have um, used my Sketchbook Pro and I have outlined all those outlines so that we can put them over the reference photo and compare it and see what the differences are. So that's just what I've done over there and we'll have a closer look at each one. So having a look, just having a look at it like it is right now, um, we can already see a couple of differences just like this. This eye already looks a bit wider, much bigger, things aren't quite placed right. This one is traced, so it would be the most accurate, and the freehand actually doesn't look too bad. It looks very close to the reference. Okay, so having a real close look at each one, this is the grid outline. So we can see that the pupil um, really was not done accurately. It's a bit lower than what it's supposed to be. It's also a lot bigger. Um, these lines over here, the eyelashes are not too bad. You can see they're quite, quite close to where they're supposed to be going in pretty much, or mostly going in the right direction. Over here, this is quite close. The eyelashes are not quite in the right position, but they are close enough. Um, this eyelash as well is a bit lower than what it's supposed to be. The outline over here for the eyeshadow of the eye is not in the right spot and the creases on top of the eyelid are much higher than what they're supposed to be. Also the eyebrow is a little is fine on this side but going towards this side we can see that it is a bit higher than what it's supposed to be and yes and then these lines over here are just to kind of locate the shadowed areas and they are pretty close to what it is on the reference photo. Okay, the tracing method. This one, everything looks pretty much spot on. So I did not fix my paper to my tracing paper to my drawing paper, and that could be the cause of some things just moving around slightly. But other than that, other than the eyelashes, everything else seems to be in the exact right position so everything here looks looks like it's correct so tracing of course is going to be your most accurate method because you don't have to you're literally just tracing from the reference I can't get any more accurate than that really <laughs> and then finally the freehand so I was very um, happy with how my freehand outline turned out 
the eyebrow is a pretty much yeah very very high on this end but coming towards this area it's in a good position so all those little spots on my reference photo there are little graphite marks that are made just to find some referencing points or starting points and then um, I would put those points on my drawing paper and pretty much connect them this eyelash over here is supposed to be over here so that's not in the correct position many of the eyelashes are actually not in the right position but it still looks right and at least everything's still flowing in the right direction the shadow is very close I'm quite happy with how I got the shadow and that line there for that dark area of the shadow could be a little bit lower and so could this this could be a little bit wider to show more of the highlighted area this line over here could also be a little bit lower for the crease under the eye and some of these eyelashes are out of place, especially this one. This one is far from where it's actually supposed to be. This one is supposed to be over here. Other than that, I'm very happy with the iris and the pupil. That looks pretty much spot on. This could have probably gone in a little bit more. That seems to be a little out of place. And this shadow over here could also have the outline just a little bit further to, uh, to make the outline for that shadow next to the eye. So that was all three of them, all the outlines done. I'm quite happy with these outlines. Everything's still going to turn out um, pretty good in the end because the outlines are really close. So each one of them will still look like the reference photo. It's just each one will look more like the reference photo than the other one. So we'll obviously see all that in the end so now that I've colored all the eyes in we are going to see how the outline has affected the final result so this is the grid eye this eye has um, turned out quite beautifully if you did not have the reference photo to look at you would think that this eye looks normal and everything looks fine nothing is disfigured or out of place but compared to the reference photo there's quite a few differences the eye this part of the eye is a lot wider than this one and a lot higher the eye looks like it's not as wide as this but it's a lot more open if I can put it that way um, the eyebrow doesn't look too bad um, it is a bit lower by the looks of it than what it should be or just rounder so that looks a little bit different the shadows look okay and yeah you actually don't spot as many differences in the final results as you do with the outline but you can see that the eye does look different different to the reference photo this one is probably the one that looks the most different um, but color wise and everything the eyes are at least quite consistent because this is a tutorial I didn't put as much time in there as I could have so I wasn't too worried about getting the texture of the skin so please do not critique me on that this is just for the sake of the tutorial to find out how the outlines are going to affect the end result so the tracing method this one looks the most like the actual reference photo everything seems to be more in place um, and there's not too much to be said about this but I, this one does look the most like the reference photo everything is shaped correctly and everything seems to be all the shadowed areas are seem to be in the correct space I probably could have added a little more shadow on this area here but that has nothing to do with the outline that's got more to do with the way I've colored it in the freehand one this one looks really good this one apart from this eyelash that's too low that needed to be higher everything else looks pretty damn close I'm really really happy with the way my freehand eye has turned out compared to my um, reference photo so I would say these two are the closest to the actual reference photo so I am very very happy with each one so when it comes to deciding which outline I prefer to use I do prefer to trace the main reason being that it saves you so much time and it is the most accurate way to get your outline freehand um, takes me the longest amount of time because I'm Focusing and observing on observing so many different areas and trying to make sure that I am locating them in all the right spaces 
Um, I'm happy with how I can get a free hand in terms of accuracy. I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out and you can still see that it is um, part of this reference photo. This is what I've drawn from. Everything looks really close. So the only reason I don't freehand a lot is because of the time it takes. It's literally the main thing that stops me from freehanding is because it is a long process. So um, that is the three different methods that you can get and how it affects the outcome. The grid, I'm surprised that I got the, the outline this wrong using the grid method. Maybe I should have used a few more squares to get it a little more accurate. But it just shows you that um, just because you're using a grid doesn't mean that your outline is going to be perfect. So if you want a perfect outline, if you're doing a commission or if you're doing a portrait and it needs to be as close to the reference photo as possible, then you will use the tracing method. If you are not too worried about the subtle details and it doesn't have to look exactly right, then you can use the freehand method. And then for those who prefer to use a grid, you could do that as well. If you aren't too comfortable with a freehand method, you don't want to trace, then go ahead and use the grid. So that's just another option. I guess it's kind of... It depends on what the artist wants to do and what they feel is um, easier for them or what they prefer. I prefer to trace. There is a misconception out there that tracing is a form of cheating. I don't think so. I think tracing is just a technique used to save time and to get an accurate outline. So you can judge for yourself compared from my tracing to my freehand drawings. You can decide for yourself if tracing is really cheating. Tracing doesn't mean you don't have the ability to do something freehand. That is not true at all. In fact, the more you trace, the more your brain um, gets used to the actual shapes of something. So when you do freehand something, it becomes easier because you've already traced those outlines so much. So it's kind of fused into your brain and you naturally draw it, draw it in its right shapes um, when you do it freehand. So tracing is actually a very good technique for practice and it's a very good um, technique in terms of saving time and getting your outline. If you're doing a really detailed outline, why would you want to do it using freehand if it's going to be so time consuming? Unless you don't want it accurate, then you can freehand it faster because you're not worried about those subtle differences. So um, I hope that this gives you guys a good perspective on the different outlines used um, and that if you are going to trace something, you don't have to worry about it being a method of cheating. It's not. It's a technique that most artists use to get something accurate. So just because you can do a perfect outline, a, a perfect trace outline, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to get a perfect picture out of it. So tracing, in my opinion, is not cheating. It's a method used to save time. So that is all from me for this week. Um, I hope that this was useful and that it gives some artists a little more encouragement to be able to um, trace without feeling guilty about it, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, otherwise, I wish you guys a wonderful week and I will see you guys soon. Bye.